exalted him and give him all the glory. Every knee will bow down and surrender. Every tongue will tell of the greatness of this man. Declaring he's the Lord and our defender. Blessed be the name of the Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing that out. 
I praise your name. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What a way to start church this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, well, well. How you doing this morning? How you doing? Is God in control? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I have a number of announcements to do this morning, but let me start off by saying if you're here today, it's your first time with us. Thank you for coming with us today on this journey to find out what God has to say to us. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I'm going to give you just a moment. I have like six announcements. So I'm going to fly through these things. So get ready. There's a, uh, usher's going to be standing at the door today. On your way out, you can give. You can also give online at fpclakecharles.com forward slash giving. Our kids zone tonight, they're, they're actually in the building. Is our kids zone here this morning? Yeah. Tonight they have service at 6 p.m. in our kids zone auditorium. It's going to be a great, great uh, kid zone is called Page Turner Stories of the Bible. They're going to learn some good stuff. So you want to bring them there at 6 p.m. Also, in the last few times that we've had Kid Zone Family Night, we've had kids get the Holy Ghost, and that's what it's all about. Amen. So please remember that. Our youth revival is coming up, coming up this next week. Their special speaker is Jonathan Quijones. It's March the 9th through the 11th. On Wednesday night, they're going to be in here with us. And we're going to get to hear Jonathan Quijones. I can't even hardly say his name. But it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Please be here 7 p.m. every night and uh, bring out your friends. If you're infinite today, I want you to know, invite somebody. Invite somebody. Get them to the house of God. It's going to be awesome. Our Charity Guild concert is coming up. It's March the 13th at 6 p.m. next Sunday. And it's going to be an amazing time of, of worship. And so this is a concert. But I don't want you to think of it like a concert. I want you to know that when you come in here, it's going to be probably a lot of people. But we're here for one reason, to lift up the name of Jesus and see what God will do. So let's do that. Invite somebody. Get them to sit with you on your pew. This is a free concert. It's going to be a lot of fun. Our Miracles, Signs, and Wonders service is the following Sunday after that. It's March the 20th. It's at 10 a.m. And uh, we're gonna, what we're doing is we're going to just put a little emphasis on miracles, signs, and wonders. Because we believe that God still does miracles, signs, and wonders. There was no stopping point to that. God still heals. He still moves. He is the mighty God. He can do anything. Amen. So that's kind of like a little plug for that. So please bring somebody. Bring somebody that needs a miracle. Bring somebody that, that needs healing in their life. Physically, emotionally, God can do a mighty work on that day. So please remember that on that evening, after we've had that service that day, we're going to have something special. This is for our dream team. This is our, our leaders who serve throughout every Sunday. They greet you at the door. They work up here on the platform. They work back there in the booth. They work in Kid Zone. We call them the dream team. We're going to have dream team night on that evening, the 20th at 6 p.m. Pastor's going to be speaking to us, and it's going to be something that we need to hear. So if you're a dream team member, I want you to be here here. I want you to be a part of that service. It's going to be amazing. Pastor's going to speak to us and we're going to have a great time just getting together because we do, right? We have a great time when we get together. It's a good thing. Last thing, the cake auction. It's our annual cake auction and this is the way that we raise money for the entire year for our kids ministry and our youth ministry. This affects them on all levels Everything from the, the pro programs that they're a part of and that they get to do, going on conferences and all those things, it all happens because we have some wonderful church members who give towards the cake auction, and they do that every year. 
And we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be following that service on the 27th. It's going to benefit all our kids' ministries and our youth ministries. And we're going to do it as an auction style. It's a lot of fun. Plus, you get to eat cake, right? Get to eat cake. So even if, I, even if there wasn't cake, just come give some money. Give it to the kids, right? Just give it to the kids. It's our next generation. They're fixing to come back. We're going to sing another song. We're going to start another worship set. This, this song, I spoke this morning to the dream team, and it says, your mercy still reaches me. And I thought of a scripture, Psalms chapter 23. And you know, lots of times with our English vernacular and the way we think, we think of words in English and the way that they are in the Bible, that, that we get caught up in the way that it says it there, and we think of it through our English. And so today I want to show you that in Psalms 23, chat, verse number 6, it says it kind of closes out that verse. Can you throw that verse up there? All right. I throw her a loop. Psalms 23, verse 6. And it says... Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that idea of the word follow, goodness and mercy follow. Follow is such, just a, just a normal word. It's just such a laid back thing that we're following after. But when I looked up the word follow in Hebrew, it's radal. And it means to chase after, to pursue after. As one who hunts, sometimes violently. I want to tell you, I don't know why you came to church this morning, but there's one who's been pursuing after you, who's been chasing after you, who's trying to give you goodness, who's trying to give you mercy. He's here this morning, and his one job is to connect with you. It's to reach you. It's to give you mercy and grace. If you want that this morning, why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you clap your hands and worship them as they come and sing this song? Let mercy chase after you.
Come on, sing it with us. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he's here. Oh, he has entered into the house. He's in the midst of his people, yes. I bless you, Lord. I bless you. I bless you, Lord. I bless you. I want you to take just a moment now and bless that one sitting right there beside you. Just take a moment now and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I prosper you. I encourage you. I comfort you in the Holy Ghost. I declare over you the goodness of God. I want to welcome all of our guests today to First Pentecostal Church. We are glad you are here. Amen. You matter to us. Today, sitting in, we have all of our teachers that are a big part of Kids Zone every single week and all the volunteers, and I am happy they are in the house of God with us this morning as well. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. I have a few things that I want to take care of in pastoring and then we're going to talk to you about a verse of Scripture and declare over you the goodness of God. I want to share with you something that's really important, though. There's a few things that God has developed. In the next few weeks, our financial department will have wrapped up their report. We'll meet with the board, and then we'll share with you the vision of what God wants to do financially in, in regards to our future. I thank God for a future. Amen? Amen. And I know that you, you, you know, you see the war and the rumor of war, and we know that there are certain end-time contingencies that are developing even now. The truth remains, until that trumpet sounds, we want to work the harvest. We want to work the harvest. The urgency is upon us. My conviction is this, that we will baptize one last person in the name of Jesus, they will come out of that baptismal tank, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and together we shall be with him in the clouds. Amen? Amen. And wouldn't it be great if we did that right here at First Pentecostal Church? That would be exceptional. I want to thank God for a moving of the Spirit. The Lord is doing a wonderful work right here at First Pentecostal Church. He has elevated this church to do the work of the end-time harvest. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But I want to share something with you that's very special. We had Brother Scott Sistrunk in. He came and was with us during our Champions Week, preached a, an amazing message on Wednesday night. And I know it's probably difficult. You don't know where to go, but you're okay, baby. You can, you can be done. <laughs> Bless her heart. She's like, I don't know when to stop. Amen. Amen. But I, while he was here... A number, a number of you remember when we were talking about foreign missions and I cast vision on how that our missionaries are extremely important. We sponsor them. We sponsor the cream of the crop, those that are producing. And God has given us understanding as to who we can really put money into and be comfortable with. But everything that we put into the kingdom of God, I believe, should reap benefits. I'm not just going to give money for the purpose of giving money, but we want to give money with accountability. And I thank God that we have some of the best missionaries. But I discovered something that really warmed my heart, and that was a number of years ago, I went to a pizza banquet at General Conference. General Conference held uh, every year for the United Pentecostal Church, and they brought in the, the foreign missions children, those that had been a part of foreign missions through the years, and had this banquet hall decorated, and it was an incredible experience. And at that time... I learned of how every other year on the off years of Youth Congress, they brought all of the foreign missionary 
students or children in. You had to be a, a, a missionary kid. And they brought them into, every year, Apoca, Florida. And there they experienced Disney World and had a few weeks, just to, or a few days, I'm sorry, just to pour into them. Well, I was hooked the moment I heard about it. Came back, shared the vision with you. I said, we're going to sponsor these. We've been sponsoring them through the years. It was a big part of the vision casting for this past year. Well, when Brother Scott Sistrunk was with us, I said, you know what? We want to add to that. We would love to be able to sponsor some of our NAM, North American missionary kids. Wouldn't that be great? We would love to sponsor them and, and catch, catch, we catch us up in that vision. And he said, really, we don't do anything for them. What do you mean we don't do anything? <laughs> so we're doing something now. We're doing something now. Amen. So he said, look, he said, you, I believe in this and I want to do this. We just need somebody. And I said, you got them. So I put the team together. This year we're going to have for our first time, our first time we're going to bring together all these NAM kids to Florida for our general conference. And we're going to have our, our first pizza bash with them. There are 45 of them between the age of 16 to 19. I am excited about this because I want to pour into these young people whose parents are on the front line building churches. Amen? Amen. And we've already raised, I have 5,000 committed through Phoenix Railroad. Thank you, Kendall. And I want uh, 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 some more finances to put toward this endeavor but we're going we're gonna to sow into them, and not this year because we need to take some time, and not next year because it's North America Youth Congress, but the following year we're going to find a way to bring them together. We're going to build rapport. I feel great about it, but we, we need your prayer and support. So I need someone every day, every day, that will catch the bird and pray for North American missionary children. Their parents have called a vision to start a church somewhere in North America. And they're fighting for their lives. And we want to come alongside and sponsor them and bless them and love them. Amen? So that's the vision there. Also, in that same conversation, I talked to him. I'd already been talking to Michael Thomas, who is over uh, our youth. And I said, listen, we have every year, we have right at thirty to 40,000. Every year we have Youth Congress, thirty or 40,000 young people coming in from all across the globe but primarily from North America, and they are on fire. They are energetic. They are passionate. They are powerful. We've got to inspire them, and we've got to put into them not only inspiration, but a commitment to teach Bible studies. Now, I've given my life to Bible studies. It's my passion, it's, and I'm going to talk about it in just a minute as it relates to this church because the things that God is doing right now, we cannot celebrate without celebrating all the seed that's been sown into our community. We are here today reaping a harvest because we planted a seed. You do not reap a harvest without seed being sown into the ground. Amen. And so I said, look, what can I do? And, 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 and again, Brother Sistrunk said, what would you like to do? And I said, it would be great if we brought together a collection of the top Bible study gurus in our movement, brought in Michael and his team, and let's, let's collaborate. We know how to make disciples. We're passionate about making disciples, but we got to teach and train up this army. Imagine if we had just fifteen or 20,000 young people that would commit to teach one Bible study. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're doing this. We're having our first meeting in June, and, 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 and it's going to happen. It's going to happen in a powerful way. Listen, there is a supernatural war going on. I am convinced that the enemy is going to try to do his best to put this on ice. But I got to pray in church. We got to worship in church. This is all about the kingdom. It's not just about... First Pentecostal Church, but God is going to use this church to inspire 
an outpouring of the Holy Ghost through Bible studies that will impact this entire world. Amen. Amen. So that's what God is doing. Now listen, you cannot be a part of the kingdom of God without blessings coming. Amen? We're going to be blessed, but not without labor. We have to work. We have to prepare our minds and our our hearts to this end. The Lord spoke to me coming out of Champions Week and said, you are to promote and you are to push worship. Train up a young generation. Train up those that are coming in that you're baptizing and praying through the Holy Ghost. Poke and prod those that are settled in to be a dynamic, worshipful church. Amen. And I can get up here and I can talk about the blessings of God and, and those kind of things, and we do just to try to pry you into, into worship. But the atmosphere has changed. God is putting a heart in you to worship. Doesn't that feel good? But here's what he said to me, because I've always been so passionate about preaching the gospel. I mean, and the reason why is because I believe that the primary purpose of a church is to fulfill the mission of go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. On any given Sunday, globally, the most powerful force in all the world globally is the independent church. There are literally millions of churches all across this globe that are proclaiming the goodness of God. Don't let the enemy confuse you. I know the hour is dark, but what is being run through social media and what's been pumped into your your mainstream approach to life is not the only reality that there is. There is a powerful, living church in the earth. Just in Lake Charles alone, there is an undeniable witness all throughout this community. And imagine the number of churches globally today that are gathering together magnifying the name of God. We are a powerful force. We are a genuine force. There's nothing like the church. So I believe in the power of the gospel and we've preached the gospel for 19 years here. And I will continue to preach the gospel but the Lord has showed me never before In our local assembly, have we been as effective in soul winning on an individual level? We had a a group that gathered a few weeks ago just of soul winners. And you say, Pastor, I wasn't invited. You had to bring a soul to church in the last few months to get an invite to that table. So we'll be doing it again. But you got to bring somebody to get to that table. Amen? Amen. But at that table, I I rub shoulders with some of the most effective and powerful people, not in this church only, but in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and the surrounding community. Because they are witnessing and bringing people to the gospel. Every single week out throughout this campus and throughout this community, we are teaching people of the importance of repentance, of the importance of being baptized in the name of Jesus, and of the importance of being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And here's what God spoke to me. You don't have to preach the gospel on Sunday. That gospel has been preached six days. On Sunday, you gather them and teach them how to worship and what has been put into them in six days. Uh, 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 Listen to me. I come to preach today. I know I'm getting a slow start, but I'm about to take off right now. He's about to bless us because we got a harvest in the field and every Sunday he's going to gather that harvest unto himself. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. 
He's about to do a work. He's not about to do a work. He is doing a work. So we got to have red hot Holy Ghost filled church every week. Somebody has been prepared to receive the Holy Ghost sitting right by you this morning. Somebody has been prepped to be baptized sitting right by you this morning. Somebody has been encouraged to repent who's sitting right by you this morning. Somebody shout amen. We got somebody that knows what to do that's in this building today. All we got to do is create the atmosphere, lift it up the name of Jesus until they at last say, I can't take it anymore. I bless you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Woo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Morgan, are you? Oh, yeah, we're about to pray for you. But I got a word for you first, okay? Now... I was in prayer, and the Lord said, I'm going to teach you how to do this. And so he began the process of teaching me. First thing he did, he reminded me of what Paul talked about when he was admonishing the church in worship. And he said, the spirit or the prophetic spirit or the spirit of the prophecy that goes forth is subject to the prophet. Right? He said, you're the prophet. The spirit of the prophetic is subject to you. Why aren't you blessing your people? I will fulfill my word, pastor. You're the angel. You're the voice of the prophetic. Prophesy over your people. So I'm going to tell you, I heap upon you blessings today. (laughs) I bless you in wellness. I bless you in your mind. I bless you in your strength. I bless you in your going. I bless you in your coming. I pray over your body right now that every part of your body would be in wellness and completeness as God has ordained it. I bless you financially. I encourage you in your finances. I bless you in your relationships that God would put people beside you that you can count on. I bless you in your marriage that God would let love flourish in your home. I bless you with a double portion of his presence, of his glory, and of his goodness. I pray God would give you a blessed year. Amen. I want you to shout, I receive that. Uh Uh-huh. Do you receive it? Or are you going to be blessed going out and coming in? Oh, my God. Woo! Come on, somebody. Are you about to have the best six months of your life? You ought to praise him right now. You ought to praise him right now. You ought to bless him right now. Glory to God, have mercy. I prophesy over you. Angels to minister. I declare over you openings, favor, bills paid, opportunities. I release the Spirit of God. Be well, be in harmony. Be at peace. Be at rest. Be encouraged. I prophesy over your family, over your children. Now look, I'm going to upset some of you, but I'm going to tell you. It's going to be contingent on your worship, though. As you smite the ground, so shall your victory be. As you smite the ground, so shall your victory be. (laughs) 
Amen. Amen. Now listen, here's what I want to preach to you for just a moment. The Bible says that Abraham told his servant, me and the lad are going yonder to worship. As they climbed the mountain, Isaac said, Dad, we've got the fire, the passion, and we got the wood, the cross. Where's the sacrifice? You know how I preached to you that Abraham did not tell him in that three days of traveling, you're the sacrifice. He only told him after they got to the top of the mountain. Then he said to Isaac, you see the land before you. This is the land that God has promised unto you. This is your destiny. You can't learn how to sacrifice until you learn that your destiny, my God, have mercy, is massive. Only after you climb and look out across what God is about to take you to can you really begin to worship him. And some of you need to lift your eyes. You need to lift your head. You need to look out and say, God's about to bless me. God's about to take me somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't praise him because of what you're in. Praise him because of where you're going. Don't praise him because of the mess you're living in right now. Praise him because of where he's taking you. You may be bound right now, but you are about to come out. Amen. And you know of how I came back and preached to you and said, listen, the next time the word worship is used, it's the servant of Abraham. The same one that was at the base of the mountain. Abraham brought into him and said, go back to my homeland and there choose among my people a daughter for my son to marry. I can't go back, I'm in covenant, but I'm sending you back. And you know of how he went back and prayed, oh God, help me, I don't like this job, I don't want it, help me. And there he asked a little baby, a sweetheart of a girl, would you give me something to drink? And she said, not only will I give you to drink, but I will water all your camels. He said, oh, baby girl, I ain't never letting go of you. I'm bringing you back. That's how I married my Shelly. You find your girl that'll work. Don't you find you a lazy girl. You find you a working girl. And the Bible says that he got down on the floor. Watch, watch. He got down amongst those people that were worshipers of the stars. The servant of Abraham got down on the ground and began to worship. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Why? Because you don't worship based on your destiny only. You worship as a culture. Everything that served Abraham worshiped Abraham's God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Listen to me. Everything that entertains you ought to worship your God. Everything that's in your body, every disease, every element of life that's in you ought to praise your God. There ought to be nothing in your life that doesn't worship Jesus Christ. So it's not only our destiny, it is our culture, it is who we are, it is who we are. But there's a lot of people that have understood the destiny of worship and understand the culture of worship that fade because it cannot just be your destiny and your culture. It's got to be inside of you. Can I have five minutes? I've been trying to preach this sermon for a month. I need five minutes. And this is the word for you. The Bible says God told Noah, build an ark. First he, he found grace. And then God said, the earth has come before me in its wickedness. Imagination of man is only evil continually. 
I'm finished with it. I'm going to drown this earth. Here's the plan to save you. Watch. If you don't understand the urgency of the hour, you're not called to preach. You got to know that God is sick and tired of the way this world is going. Right? But understand, God's frustration with the world will always have grace on one side and a plan on the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Right? And if you're going to be a good preacher, you got to know how to preach grace and the plan. And the plan is this you got to repent of your sins. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's an old plan. It reaches all the way back to where Adam covered Adam and Eve with clothes of skin and said, I have sacrificed the lamb that I might cover you. It continued all the way through to where God brought Israel out of Egypt and they had to put blood on the doorpost. Brought them through the Red Sea and said the water is going to save you from the Egyptians. This is not a new message. This is an old message that's made new by Jesus Christ. In the description of the plan, he said put a, watch, a Zohar, spelled T-Z-O-H-A-R. The T is a lazy, doesn't work, silent, Zohar. Zohar is a unique word only used once in all the canon of Scripture. It is a combination of two things. A window connected to a formation of crystallized origin. What? Somebody say 300 and 82 days. That's how long that ark was floating. For 40 days, the sun shined brightly, but the earth discontinued in its rotation. For 40 days, the foundations of the deep were released, and the currents began to flow backwards as water flooded the earth. One storm after another, until the last mountain was covered and everything died. Then, after 40 days, the earth began again in its rotation around the sun. But now they're still on that ark for 342 days. There was only one light source, 18 inches by 18 inches, that provided light. So God said, you're going to make a Zohar, Rasha, the famed French rabbi, spoke of it often and wrote of it extensively. It is a formation of a window that has coming down literally a crystallized chandelier. Oh. The sun would come in beaming hot through that window opening. It would hit that chandelier which would then consume the light. There were three levels to that ark. Three levels. At the bottom, it was dark. It was damp. It was wretched. Until Noah said, I'm going to let the Zohar down. All the way to the bottom. Are you with me? And when it got to the bottom, that light would shine out into the core of that ark. Inward it will shine out. Here's what we know. When that light came out of that crystallized formation, it shone forth the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> Literally inside the ark for 342 days was a rainbow of brilliant light. You got to hear what I'm teaching. Before he ever put a bow in the cloud, he put a bow in the inside. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Are you hearing what I'm preaching? Are you hearing what I'm preaching? Before it's on the outside, it's got to be on the inside. If you're going to praise him out here, it's because you know him in here. 
Woo! If you got joy out here, it's because you have joy in here. If you're thankful out here, it's because you're thankful in here. Oh, my God. Oh, dear God. There's a reason why. There's a reason why. A generation later, they said, let's build a tower whose top may reach the heavens. Let's make a name for ourselves. At least we'd be scattered across the earth. The bow in the clouds did not mean anything to them. Right? Because they didn't understand the plan. <laughs> Right? They, they had never been in the ark. They didn't understand the Zohar. Right? What I'm telling you is this. If you get him on the inside, people are going to look at you and go, why are they praising him who is everlasting? Why are they praising him who is without fault? I know the kind of hell they're going through. I know the kind of mess they're going through. And we can say over and over, well, it's our destiny and it's our culture. But the truth is, it's got to be more than destiny and it's got to be more than culture. you got to be able to testify. There's something on the inside of me that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. It may look like I'm drifting on water. It may look like I'm living through storms. But i got a rainbow. i got a promise on the inside. i got joy on the inside. God have mercy. Stand with me today. Here's what the Lord told me to do. Listen to your pastor. He's about to heal you. Come see. Come see, love. Pastor Jared, prayer team, I want you to come. Come on, baby girl. Beautiful, beautiful girl. I'm not going to tell you age, though you're young. I know. She's not 30. She's 27. Got cancer, going to MD Anderson. But what have we prophesied in this church over and over again? While they're on their way, because we believe in MD Anderson, but while they're on their way, we want them to stop by First Pentecostal Church. Listen, listen to your pastor. Listen to me. Listen to your pastor. I want this to be one of a hundred. Brenda. Brenda Thornton. Hang on, Pastor Jared. I want to tell this story. Pastor Jared, one second. I was sitting in the emergency or the waiting room when the doctor, the surgeon came out. Right? Please forgive me if I tell too much of this story. But you were asleep. You were fighting for your life. They came out. Now, this is one miracle of a multitude of miracles. But the Lord showed me this in prayer this morning. It vividly brought me to remembrance. Your husband was there, right? And then I was praying in the gym, and I saw you and Lanny get out. And I just, I got to tell this story for you, right? So... You had a mass right on top of your brain. They opened it up, began the process of surgery, right? They had to close it, resuscitate you. It was a crazy day. Go back in and finish the work. When he came out, the doctor came out, he said a lot of things, some of which I cannot repeat. It would have been a tough day for him. But he made this statement. He said, Pastor, thank you for being here. We understand the value of faith as it relates to healing. Right? Our prayer is that God heals you immediately, right? Right now? That, that, that literally it would just, because I know the healing has already begun because it hasn't spread, right? Okay? But it's just going to be God just going to consume it, right? But here's what I want you to know. Faith and healing Go hand in hand. There's, you, you can't separate them. You can't separate them, right? So your belief today in being here is all you need, right? It's all you need. 
Because the enemy will say, well, you don't have enough faith. No, no, no. To, to stand here today is the equivalent of saying, I got enough faith, right? It's that simple, okay? It's that simple. But here's what I want you to understand, right? Jesus spoke to a woman at a well. They talked about living water. And Jesus said to her at one point, go get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, true, you have said you don't have a husband, for you've been married five times. And she goes, oh, I perceive that thou art a prophet, right? Watch. She said, you are a prophet because you know my past. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, right? Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Understand, the prophetic is always connected to worship. You understand? The more you know him, the more you worship him. Today we're going to worship him as a healer. Amen. Knowing, knowing that you are, com you, are, you are surrounded by a community that has been healed. Right here, healed. So the spirit of the prophetic has testified. My healing is all about you. Worship me as a healer. Right? Now this is not the only healing God wants to do today. Amen? There are other healings, and I want you to step out and make your way across this front here. Just now, just come make your way, one after another. Doesn't matter how old you are, what kind of healing you need, just make your way. Stand with enough room for Pastor Jared and our prayer team to get through. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay? Right? So, congregation, here's what we're going to do. We're going to repent, and then we're going to worship. If there's any sin in our lives, God, we ask you to forgive us. Remove from us all stagnation. Remove from us all measure of doubt. Remove from us any interference, God, whether of our nature, whether of our doing, whether God thoughts or intent of the heart continue to overwhelm us. We pray against sin. We pray against the flesh. We repent right now. Now, Jesus, we ask you, let a spirit of worship, a beautiful, powerful spirit of worship, Fill this house and this sanctuary. We praise you for it, God. We bless you for it, God. We declare your name over it, God, in Jesus' name. Now I want you to lift your hands and begin to worship. Just worship, just worship, just worship. There's no, there's, there, there, there's no wrong way. Just begin to lift up his name. Yeah. <laughs> I bless you in Jesus' name. I speak virtue over you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak virtue over you in Jesus' name. I speak virtue over you in Jesus' name. If you need to receive the Holy Ghost today, it's here. It's here today. Begin to pray until that inward light begins to shine. Let that light go all the way down to the bottom, that crud, that darkest part of your being. Let that light begin to shine. Let that inward, let that inward rainbow begin to blast. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, shaka That's it, speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is on you. Speak in tongues today. It's your day. It's your day. It's your day. I surrender Jesus. I surrender Jesus. It's your day. It's your day. Let that rainbow shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm 
I want you to begin to pray for one another. Find you somebody right now, just begin to bless them. Find you somebody right there in your pew. I know it's impossible for everybody to get to the front, but right now we gotta bless one another. We gotta prophesy over one another. We gotta let the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate. I want you to begin to pray right now the grace of God. I encourage you in the Holy Ghost. Oh, there's power in your prayer. There's power in your prayer. You don't have to be perfect to pray big prayers. I just want you to begin to bless somebody all across this house. Oh, the grace of God is working all across this house. All across this house, the grace of God is working. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Even now, pray in the Spirit. Pray with understanding and pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. There's another wave of goodness. There's another wave of mercy. There's another wave. That's it. Operate in the Spirit now. Flow in the Holy Ghost now. Come on, Jody. Come on, Jody. Let him shine inwardly. Come on, Jody. It's not just your destiny. It's not just your culture, Jody. It's who you are on the inside out. Yaka. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your innermost being should be a vibration coming forth right now. So all we got to do is praise Him. Just have enough faith to praise Him right now. I bless you, Jesus. 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 All right, I'll call you. I bless you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. That's it. Find you one more friend. Find you one more brother. Find you one more sister. Pray with somebody, bless somebody. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I gotta move in the Holy Spirit. I gotta move in the flow. I gotta move in the grace of God. I gotta operate right here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 Weep, old man. Weep, 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 weep. Come on, bless him, elder. Come on, bless him, elder. Praise him. Praise him, elder, for every sunrise. Praise him. Praise him. Rock on, rock on. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah.
All you got to do is bless him to get the promise. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is praise him to get the prophetic. That's all.
What a heart for worship. What a heart for worship right here. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I see that brilliant light being lowered down. Down into the bottom floor of that ark. I see those animals coming alive. Waking up. Feeling light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got hopes, you got dreams, you got passion in you. Let the light of God shine through. greater sound in all the world right here. No greater sound. Let it roar out of you. Let it roar. Oh, let it roar. When angel and elder praise him. In Revelation chapter 4, the Bible says, I heard a sound of many waters. That's the people of God. <laughs> let a sound of many waters be in this house.
Thank you for joining us today for this broadcast. We hope that you're blessed by it. I want to wrap up with a prayer in just a moment, but prior to that, I want to share with you something. If you feel it's important to be baptized as an exterior witness to the interior faith that you have in regards to Jesus Christ, if you see the importance of it, as we have conveyed today through this sermon, and perhaps you want a few more questions answered or maybe you want to talk to somebody about being baptized and set up a date, there's a number and there's an email address there on the screen. Please reach out to us. We will make that appointment this week. We will sit down with you and go through the process of biblically showing you what we mean as an exercise of faith in the waters of baptism. We know the importance of being buried with him that we might live with him. So now I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you today that you have given us this amazing moment and this important sermon to guide us into what it means to truly be framed in you by the faith and the wonder of baptism. Today I pray for that scarlet thread that is a testament to hope that it would be applied to all of our lives. And we, once again, thank you and glorify you for Calvary and for the resurrection. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May God richly bless you this week. Once again, thank you for joining us. brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful? Took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Whoa!